Hey everyone, how you doing today? Topic number three with Greg Dickerson is going to be a fun one. Lots of you have given me a hard time over the years going, why don't you own a Ferrari or a Lamborghini? You try to tell us you're an expert. You try to tell us you're financially free. Go flex and buy a ridiculously expensive car. So I'm going to ask Greg Dickerson, all right, if you and I wanted to go buy a Ferrari, how would we do it? So uh, Greg, congratulations. We both want a Ferrari or Lamborghini. Which one do you want? Well, you know, I've been there, done that. And mine was actually a Hummer H2 when they first came out. <laughs> ah, there you go. You bought your toy, huh? <laughs> oh, yeah. That was back, you know, I don't know, 20 years ago, 15, whatever it was when I went through that whole, you know, but it was utilitarian. I lived in an area where, you know, I lived on a beach and it was four wheel drive and I used it for fishing and driving up and down the beach. So, you know, it did have utility to it. So it wasn't just total eye candy that you just <laughs> park in the garage. So number one, um, you know, I used it. I went and bought the luxury vehicle and I used it every single day, which, you know, a lot of these guys will buy one and stick it in the garage or something. Yeah. It's like silly. Go drive the thing. You know, yeah. why else did you buy it? You know, yeah. but to answer your question, build businesses that generate cash flow to invest in other assets that'll pay for your toys. So that's what I did. So it's always about if you want something, you need to think about, you know, how can I afford it? And it's funny, people used to come up to me all the time. And that, you know, the, the biggest question I ever had with that Hummer was, you know, what's the gas mileage in that thing? You know, <laughs> it's really funny, you know, and they're like, yeah, you know, cause gas was three or four bucks a gallon or whatever, three bucks a gallon when I bought it. And they're like, what kind of gas mileage you get? And I'm like, you know, 10. And they're like, man, that's, that's a lot of money. I said, well, if you, you know, if you have yeah. to think about the gas mileage, <laughs> yeah, you don't need yeah, to be you buying, be buying it. <laughs> yeah. All right. So let's, let, let's just pick out a Ferrari. Cause I think they're beautiful cars. So let, let's say you want to go buy a, th you know, you have your eye on this $300,000 Ferrari. I mm -hmm. have no idea which one magic is 300 grand. Uh, again, you're sitting there, you're in the, in the um, dealership, you're going to buy it brand new, but you got to go make the money first, right? You, you, right. Cause you, you want to pay cash for something like that. You don't want to, you don't want to lease it. You don't want to get it on payments. You can do all that, but that's even dumber than buying it in the first place. <laughs> you mean you don't want to sign up for an $8,000 car payment? No, no, because there's so many. So for me, there's so many better uses of the cash. I don't care how much money you have, you know, to, to throw something again, to throw that much cash on something you're going to stick in your garage and not even really use. Now, if you're <laughs> driving it every day, whatever. But, you know, I'm, since that Hummer experience, I said, yeah, I'm not doing that anymore. And I've driven a Suburban ever since, which those things ain't cheap, you know, yeah. they're when I was buying Suburbans, they were 50 grand. Now they're 70, you know, yeah. to 80. It's like, what the heck? Yeah. But, um, you know, but anyways, yeah. So if you go in there, you know, you want to pay cash, you can lease them, you can rent them, you can finance them, you can do all that. But if you can't afford to pay cash for the car, don't buy it. Wow. Okay. So if you can't stroke the check or bring a, bring a bag full of money, don't buy it. Okay. So it's 300 grand. Yeah. Um, so you've got to go spend some time building a business, right? And, and putting the cash flow and saving away. Or I don't investing know. in Bitcoin or NFTs <laughs> or, you know, stocks. <laughs> Come on. That's not what you and I would do. Come on. That's not... No. So we not so, now, not no. now, but when it was 3000 bucks, you know, that was the time to do it. Exactly. Exactly. So again, what you would probably go do is you, again, let's just pretend that's what you wanted. Mm -hmm. It's it's something on the vision board or whatever you have. Yeah. And you're like, okay, I'm going to go spend one to five or six or whatever years it takes. And you're going to go produce cash flow or profit. You're going to take a percentage of that and probably tuck it away. Right. That's your Ferrari money because you still got to invest in the business. You got to keep it going. You got to, you know, you, you can't take all the profit or else you just don't grow. Yeah. Um, so what you take 5% away and you just wait till you got 300 grand and then you walk in the store with a bag full of money or what's the deal? Yeah. It depends on how bad you want it and you know, what you're, how much you're really making, but um, you know, what you can live on. So, I mean, if that's something you really, really want, then you, you save as much as you can possibly save to, you know, get to the point where you can buy it. But again, there's a lot to think about when you buy cars like that that a lot of people don't think about. Obviously, number one is the fuel. Number two is the maintenance. You know, maintenance is, you know, 20-fold on a car like that versus yeah. your average car. So you got to think about the cost of ownership. And, and when the when the economy suffers, man, when it was going down 2008 and 9, let me tell you, there were a lot of Rolexes, Ferraris, Bentleys, Rolls Royce. You can find them everywhere for 50 cents on the dollar. So, mm -hmm. you know, those things are not an investment. They're a liability you need assets. So really the best thing to do would be to build a business, use that cash flow to invest in assets like real estate that okay. build value that pay to pay for the car. Yeah. That's, that's what you want to do. Yeah. That's, that's kind of how I broke it down. Cause I knew this was going to be our topic number three. So I actually thought about this one this morning 
is I, is I would I would go in and I would use my analytical brain and go, okay, what is this thing going to cost me, or what should I expect it to cost me a month? Because that's just how my 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 world's always been months or quarters ever since I had a because yeah. I always had a sales quota, right? This is just how my my brain works. And you know, a three hundred thousand car like that, yeah, gas, insurance, maintenance. You know, for me, it's like this thing might cost fifteen grand a month, mm-hmm. right? And if I'm going to eat that. I need to go produce at least 18 or 20 grand. Cause you know, you're going to have surprises and, and, and yeah. flips. So that's kind of how I broke it down. I'm like, damn, I got to go, you know, I got to go find a way to make 20 grand. And then in my world, it's, it's always buy and hold real estate. Well, okay. Well, that means I'm going to have to do, you know, five flips a year, take the profit from that. Go, go, you know, go buy three, four plexes, go do that, go that. I'm like, damn, I'm going to have to have like, I'm just making up numbers now 50 more units. Mm-hmm. to get the car right and i'm like okay great so 50 units is the number that's kind of how i walk through my logic is okay figure yeah, out for me it's you know go build a couple of houses go flip a couple of houses because if you're making you know 50 7500 grand a house you know or whatever you know back when i was coming up that was my world mm-hmm. so you go and that's how i did what i did you know i sold the house i made 300 grand mm-hmm. i went and spent you know 100 of it on a hummer <laughs> that's you know? right. and so to me it was just you know, whatever i just flipped this house made this money you know what yeah. the heck I was young, stupid, you know, but looking back now, it's like, if I'd have taken that hundred and put it in just even, even in an index fund, it'd be millions now. So it's, even though I had it, it was discretionary. It's still just, to me, it's just, I'm at the point in my life now where it just doesn't make any sense. And I could care less about that stuff, you know? Yeah. But come on, lots of people like to think about owning a Ferrari. So yeah, for me, it, it, for me, it's not, I, for me, it was, okay, what is this thing going to cost me a month? I'm going to go buy assets that pay it because eventually the car will be paid for either it's paid for the day you buy it or over time and then i still want the assets right that was what that's that was the thing. yeah or it could make more sense to lease it because lease is going to be your cheapest payment you know so depending on what kind of a business you have and how you structure the lease you know Mm -hmm. that and if you're not driving it you're not putting miles on it then a lease could make a lot more sense for you than um you know buying it paying cash owning it and then what makes the most sense if you want to drive a ferrari just drive go rent one for the weekend get it out of your system yeah. and give it back that's i'm glad you brought that up because one of the things i've talked about that i i failed uh it's my biggest regret is i didn't celebrate as we were on this journey to financial freedom mm-hmm. that's exactly what i tell people to do right it's, it's either it's either a car like ferrari or everybody wants a boat for some reason I'm like, mm-hmm. you know, the, the two best days in a boat owner is the day you buy it, the day you sell it, right? Because they just they just sit there and they... So you know. again, I lived in a summer resort destination, the Outer Banks of North Carolina, fantastic fishing. We were like, you know, right off the Gulf Stream. So offshore fishing was huge. Every contractor I knew had a boat. I was the only contractor in the beach that did not have a boat. You know why? What is a boat? It's a hole of water you throw a bunch of money into. <laughs> you know? Yeah. So I was like, why buy a boat? Everybody I know has one and they're always asking me to go out fishing with them. So there's yeah. absolutely no reason for me to have a boat. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I was too busy with everything else, but I stayed away from that because, you know, it's just, man, those things are expensive. You yeah. Know? Go, go rent one. Like you said, go rent a Ferrari, yeah. go, go drive the yeah, coast. It's time consuming, you know, and uh, you know, that's the other thing. So here's what I did instead of all that, instead of a boat and the expense, well, I did the expensive car, but then, you know, after a while, you know, I ended up selling it down the road, but you know, it was fun. I used it. I took it fishing. I took it surfing, you know, I used it. But what I did was I bought, uh, you know, I had a uh, second home at a ski resort, mm-hmm. didn't rent it, didn't have to, just bought it, paid cash, um, stocked it up. So it was there. So I'd pick the kids up after school on a Friday, we'd head up to the, you know, to the ski resort wintergreen and we'd go up there and we'd ski all weekend and go home. So those nice. are the types of things I did versus all the other little toys. Yeah. You know, that way the whole family could enjoy it, you know, with boating, Experience. it just, yeah. yeah. Boating's too much time, you know, too much energy, too much for me, you know, cause the whole family couldn't participate. Cause you know, we were doing all kinds of different things. So I spent, I spent it on things that we could participate on. And then, you know, obviously we traveled and went different places and stuff like that. So Very yeah, I'm all about renting and using what you need when you need it. Even owning a second home, like I did, I wouldn't do it again because then you're kind of, it was fun when the kids were growing up, but yeah. you're kind of locked into going there. Yeah. One you know, spot, you don't right? really go anywhere else. Yeah. But it was, it was nice and it was a good weekend, you know, place and it was close. We could be there in four hours, you know, in four and a half hours. That's cool. Well, this has been fun. So this is how we would go do it. And again, I think I would close with just go rent the damn thing and go rent a nicer one, Mm -hmm. right? If you can afford a 300, go do this. I mean, it it, just so you know, I mean, I've looked at renting Ferraris. They're they're not cheap. It'll be, it'll be eight, nine, 10 grand, but you know, go get the, go get that adrenaline, rev it up, you know, burn the tires out, take some pictures 
and then have yeah, the you can try a bunch of different ones and yeah. you know i mean you can go down to disney and you know drive them on a racetrack you know and yeah. that kind of stuff there you go well this has been fun man i appreciate you uh any closing thoughts on all today's discussions Yep. So at the end of the day, no matter what it is you want to do, so you want to think, always think, you know, not I can't, it's how can I? So whether it's you, whether you want to do something, you want to buy something, you want to go somewhere in terms of affordability, how can I afford it? So that was when I flipped my mindset back in the day was how can I afford the things that I want for my family and for me? And so that's where I set out to build businesses that generated cash flow to invest in other assets, to pay for the things that I wanted to do in my life. And same thing, if there's just anything you want to do, don't, don't convince yourself or stop yourself by saying, I can't do something, you know, forget the money. It's just whatever, you know, yeah. I, I could never do that. You know, instead think, how could I do that? How can I make it happen? How can it be possible for me? And more importantly than that, who do I need to become in order for that to happen? Oh, I love that finish. Thank you very much, Greg. That was a great way to end this. Thanks, buddy.